Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be talking about structs, okay? Uh, in many programming languages, uh, you have uh, the concept of a struct, or uh, in object-oriented uh, programming languages, you have classes, and uh, more recently, they've been adding more uh, what they call value-type uh, uh, data structures that are also commonly called structs. But in Zig, uh, structs serve uh, multiple roles, as we will see. You can have a, a typical data structure-like struct that has fields, but you can also have uh, declarations inside structs, um, like variables and constants. And uh, when you have functions in a struct, they could be uh, just uh, namespace functions, or they could be methods, as we're going to see. And uh, you can also have... Um, uh, structs without fields that only have such declarations and in that case uh, they they're called namespaces basically okay so uh, let's start out with a pretty a pretty simple uh, struct a common example here a point um, when we create uh, structs in zig we give them a capital uh, the first letter is capital because it's pretty much like defining a type and we use the struct keyword, and within the curly braces is the definition of the struct. In this case, uh, we are giving this struct two fields of type F32, and the names are here, X and Y, okay? As you can see here, you can give default values to fields. We're giving Y a default value, and we'll see later on how, how you can use that in the syntax when you're instantiating a struct. Here we have an example of what we can call a namespace function. And, and why is it a namespace function instead of a method, as, as maybe you may think from, from experience with other languages? It's because it's a function, but it doesn't have uh, the, the first parameter being of type uh, of the struct type here itself. Okay. Um, it just has a couple of parameters here like any other function but we do call it a namespace function because as you will see later on uh, we will use the type name when we uh, want to call that function so it's basically part of the namespace being defined here by this uh, struct uh, in, in, in these uh, curly braces right here okay um, and uh, here we have an example of uh, what you could really uh, call a method because uh, it does have here this first parameter is of type point, which is the type of its parent uh, uh, namespace. And uh, here the name self is uh, just a convention. It doesn't have to be self. You can, you can give it any name. You could call this point if you want also. Um, but it's it's conventional to see uh, uh, the first parameter given the name self and here uh, we are uh, also receiving another parameter that's also of type point okay so uh, and it's basically uh, doing the calculation of distance here okay as I said if you have a struct that has no fields it's basically a namespace okay so uh, I'm giving this one a namespace name here so we can be pretty uh, obvious about that and we only have a constant and a var defined inside this uh, namespace struct okay here in main we're going to see uh, what's known as an anonymous struct literal being used to initialize a, a, a constant named a point we're saying here that it's of type point and that's why here we can use the anonymous syntax, just a dot and the curly braces, because uh, the, the type here of the uh, result is, is explicit over here. And uh, we can just specify the dot x field here and not the dot y, because the, the dot y has a default value, as we saw uh, up here at the beginning. So um, let's go here. Um, because it's, it has that default value, uh, we can leave it out when, when we're initializing. Uh, but if we wanted to give it uh, another uh, value uh, that's different from the default, then we could uh, specify it like here, like this. Okay? And we are also uh, showing an example here of using uh, that namespace function that we called new. 
uh, here we use the type name and then the new uh, function with uh, the what would be the X and Y arguments that we're passing into the call which match up with the X and Y parameters of the function definition okay once we have uh, those instances we can make use of the fields and the methods by using the familiar dot syntax uh, where we have the the variable dot and uh, if it's a field or, or a method name uh, method call specifically uh, here we're gonna um, have an example where we are calling the distance method uh, using the dot here a point dot distance okay and then we give it as the parameter the B point okay but as I said uh, we call the methods uh, following along with the traditional uh, definition of methods uh, but there are just uh, functions okay so we could also call them um, directly on the type using this type of syntax here we have the type name here we had a specific instance of the type but here directly on the type point we call distance and then we make use of both uh, parameters as defined in the function definition we give it two points okay a point and b point so we can call it like that like a namespace function too okay and here we have a demonstration that that struct that we created called namespace uh, since it doesn't have any fields it's just a namespace it has size zero. Here we're going to see compared with uh, si using the built-in size of in the case of point that has two fields and in the case of namespace. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at that output over here. And here we can see size of point is eight, eight bytes. Why? Because we have two F32 fields and uh, F32 would occupy, uh, occupy four bytes each. And size of namespace is indeed zero because it doesn't have any fields. Okay. Now, a very interesting feature of Zig, and it's made possible by this built in here, the uh, field parent putter, is that you can, uh, having a pointer to a field of a struct, you can obtain a pointer to the struct itself. Okay. So here we're defining this uh, C point variable, it's a point basically at the origin with zero zero and we're calling this uh, function here that says that it's called set y based on x and the inter interesting part is that we're only passing a pointer to the x field of the, uh, the c point instance okay and we're passing along uh, a 42 and then we will print out the value of y okay and if we look at the output over here, we'll see that it says cpoint.y is in effect now 42. Okay, so we were able to mutate the dot y field of this uh, c point by passing a pointer to the dot x field. Okay, and how, how is that achieved? We'll look here at the function, and as you can see, the at field parent putter uh, built in you pass it in the type is the first um, parameter and the second uh, parameter is the a string with which is the name of the field uh, of which we're passing in a pointer to and then the actual variable that has uh, that, that pointer okay so what this is going to do is with this pointer and we're telling it this is the name within this type we can obtain a pointer to that point type that in that specific instance in memory okay and that's going to be assigned here to this constant point and then using that we can do a modification of the y field point dot y equals uh, y, which is the parameter here, y that we are passing into this function. So as you can see here, x is just a pointer to an F32, which is uh, what we are doing uh, here when we when we call uh, the function. We are passing a pointer to an F32, which is that field x. Okay, so that's a really powerful feature uh, of Zig. And uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting use cases for this type of functionality. Uh, uh, there are 
for example, uh, an implementation of uh, interfaces in Zig that uses uh, that built-in. Okay, and finally, we're going to see that um, when we have a pointer to a struct, which we're doing here, we're uh, taking the address of C point, and we're storing it here in, in this other variable, C point putter. We can um, uh, access the fields and the methods via the dot operator directly without having to dereference first through the dot star operator. Okay, that's a convenience uh, that Zig offers us. You could do it as we are going to demonstrate here. Here we're directly accessing dot y. Okay, this is the, the convenient syntax. And here we are first dereferencing the pointer and then accessing the dot y field, which you can also do, but it's less convenient. And if we see over here in the output, we can see effectively that we obtain the same value 42.0 in both cases. Okay. And now that we've seen uh, basically what a struct is and how it can be used both as a data type with fields and as a namespace, we're going to see that in Zig, you can have the definition of a struct in a file, in a separate file. Okay. And uh, let's take a look here. If we look at the SRC directory, we're going to see that we have the normal main.zig, which is the file that we've been working on. And I have another file here, point.zig. And let's take a look at that one. And uh, point.zig basically includes exactly the same code as we saw over here in the point definition, this code right here. Um, if we go here to uh, point.zig, it's basically the same with the addition of here, we make the functions public because if we don't make them public, we can't use them from another file. Okay, so both of them are now pub public, okay, with the pub keyword. And also, um, we are using here, making a declaration called point and using the at this built-in, okay? And why do we have to do this? Because, let's look over here. If, if uh, you observe here, we are defining here a constant called point and assigning it that struct. And this is basically a demonstration uh, of the fact that in Zig, all structs are anonymous, okay? This is indeed an anonymous struct definition, and we are assigning it um, to this uh, point constant here. And what Zig is going to do is that it will um, then assign this name point to this uh, struct type that we're defining here. That's why we can use here this name point and down here also this name point. Okay. But inside this file, if I don't have this definition, uh, that name point isn't defined anywhere, okay? We don't have a const definition as we had uh, in, in the, in the main.zig file. So that's why we make use of this at this built-in. What it'll do at this is it, it returns a reference to the struct that contains that call to at this, okay? So in this case, it'll return a reference to uh, to basically all uh, all of this uh, struct that we're defining in this file, and we are naming that uh, reference point, and then we can use that name as we did before. Okay. So uh, with that, how do we use? Uh, let's uh, let's go back to main.zig, and what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to comment this out. Okay, and what we can do is we make an import const point equals at import, and then we import point.zig. Okay, now I save those changes, we clear the screen, let me run, and you see that we obtain exactly the same result. Okay, so you can't put the definition of a struct, be it a, a data structure with fields or a namespace struct, 
in separate files and this will allow you to organize uh, really neatly your zig projects okay and uh, as you can see um, this uh, flexibility uh, on the naming of structs given that they're all anonymous uh, is, is really powerful because here we're using this name internally point in our definition but when we do the import if we have uh, for example let's uncomment this and we want to treat this import like another version let's uh, we, we could call it point two okay um, and it would not uh, conflict with this other definition here so it's it's a lot of flexibility that you can have when you're dealing with uh, struct definitions in separate files and how you name them and how you use them okay so uh, with that um, I'm gonna leave it up to up to this part um, there's there's a, a bit more that we can say about structs but we'll be ha handling that when we talk about comp time and we talk about other aspects uh, of structs in zig but for now, this is basically the fundamental basics that you need to know about structs. So I hope you find this useful. Did the builder here. See you in the next one.